Are you looking for a simple to use multi-room system that won't break the bank? Enter Audio Pro. If we're talking multi-room wireless hi-fi, then Audio Pro is quickly becoming one of the first brands that comes to mind. Winning What Hi-Fi's best budget multi-room system in 2020 and a five-star review, along with an abundance of individual product awards for their add-on speakers, we thought it was about time to showcase these products for you guys and help you work out which speaker or speakers in the add-on series are right for you. Now, if you don't already know, Audio Pro are a Swedish brand with over 40 years of experience who are all about the simplicity of multi-room. If you're looking for a multi-room option, then for us, these offer spectacular performance per pound and are worth putting on your shortlist. But which speakers are right for your home? Now, as you can see, I've got the Audio Pro C series in front of me, and all of these are active multi-room Wi-Fi speakers with a very distinctive look. They all offer Wi-Fi connectivity, Bluetooth 4.0, Spotify Connect, AirPlay, and can connect to a TV, turntable, or CD player. So you've really got a range of connectivity options. They do also support a variety of audio formats, including MP3, AAC, FLAC files, and Apple Lossless. Design-wise, you can see they all have a very distinguished kind of retro style look with this leather handle here, which honestly feels like something from a Hermes range. They're that good quality. You've also got solid cabinets, a brushed metal control panel. I think it's brass, actually, um, which even these feel really nice and tactile. And shout out to the presets as well here because I actually like those and it allows you to get quick access to your most listened to content. This similar layout of uh, two tweeters and one woofer in this configuration just go up in size as you go up the range. Now, all of the add-on speakers are stereo speakers in their own right, but you can stereo pair two of the same uh, to get true stereo sound performance. You've also got reflex ports on the back here, which also grow in size as well with the cabinet. I'll pop up the sizings now for you to compare, and I'll also point out that these are pretty weighty speakers, even this little C3. To sum it up, if you're looking for a speaker that's built well, the entire range definitely feels premium. You also have a great range of connections, which I'll come back to in a little bit. Before we delve into the speakers, all of these speakers have the connectivity flashed on the screen now, but also with the exception of the T3 Plus, come with the Audio Pro app, which is worth having a look at, particularly if you're already comparing these with the likes of the Sonos or Denon Hios system, for example. On the whole, the Audio Pro app is functional, easy to use, and it's quick to get new products set up and connected. Now this app is essentially your hub for connecting multiple Audio Pro speakers easily in a multi-room setup. You can group, ungroup, change volumes, and things like that. There are a few other things worth noting. For example, you can tweak the bass and the treble here to suit you. You can also set an alarm or sleep timers, uh, etc., in the app. For me, the app is a little basic and occasionally a little laggy, but not so much that you can't use it every day. You do also have to leave the app to use Spotify, Apple Music, etc., like I said, which can feel a bit disjointed, but I do know lots of other people prefer Spotify Connect, so not the end of the world. If you're looking for a service with integrated music services on their own app, whereby they are controlled from within the app itself, then Sonos may be better suited to your needs in that scenario. So let's kick off with the C3 then, which is a repeated winner at the What Hi-Fi Awards over the years. Now this is available in a choice of three colors, white, black, and gray, which we have here. As you can see, it's a really nice compact size. And at the top, we've got buttons to control Wi-Fi connectivity, Bluetooth 4.0, and other sort of music playback. Now, as the speaker has a built-in battery, you've also got a battery power indicator here too. And then these are your little Wi-Fi presets that I mentioned earlier, which you can control in the app. On the back, we've got an aux in connection, which is how you can connect up a turntable here, along with your power, ethernet for wired connection, and your reflex port. Now I mentioned that this C3 is also the only battery powered option in this lineup, which is a nice little addition. Now while I do see the speaker primarily being used as a dedicated home speaker and connected to power, it is nice to have the option of taking it on the go with a 15 hour battery life at 50% volume or a nine hour battery life at max volume. Just bear in mind, it doesn't have any sort of weatherproof rating, so make sure you only take it out on those drier days. I also perhaps would have liked to have seen a case made available for it if you did want to use it like a portable speaker. But to be honest, I think the idea of this is to use it around your home and garden on the sunny days, especially when the weather's good enough to get those uh, barbecues up and running. In terms of internals, we've got a 3.5 inch long throw woofer and two three quarter inch textile dome tweeters. 
power outputs increase in increments as you go up the range and we kick off with the 25 watt class D digital amplifier in the little C3. Now I'll come back to how these sound uh, in our sound comparison a little bit later on. So if we move up to the C5, another popular product at the Watt Hi-Fi Awards, this model is also available in three colors, black, white, and gray. Now key differences here of course are the components. We step up to a four inch woofer while retaining the 0.75 inch tweeters. We also step up to a 40 watt class D digital amp instead of a 25 watt with the C3. As a result of that, you'll see that it's sort of the middle size of the family when you put it up side by side with the C3 and then the C10. Now we say goodbye to the built-in battery, but we do say hello to a line-in connection with an RCA port here. On the back, things look slightly different as we also add a USB connection for charging an external device, a sub-out connection to add a subwoofer, which is interesting, an ethernet connection for a wired connection to your router, and then finally a Wi-Fi and input switch. On the top here, you'll also notice that the aux connection has moved up to the top panel. I'm not really too sure why. I personally preferred it tucked away on the back. It sort of reminds me of something like the Marshall Acton, reminiscent of those guitar amps. I will note that there is a C5A speaker, and that's essentially the same speaker as this one, but with the addition of Amazon Alexa voice control, if you're looking for that. Now, I think it's more obvious that this is more of a speaker to use at home, maybe in a study or smaller living room, kitchen, things like that, where you want more punch than the C3, but you don't really need the power of the C10. Which brings me on nicely to the largest speaker of the add-on series, the also award-winning C10 Mark II, which is available again in black, white, or gray. Again, looking similar to the C5 here, exactly the same top panel and all the same connections on the back. They've just been arranged a little bit differently. As the most powerful speaker in the range, we now get a five and a quarter inch driver and an 80 watt class D amplifier, double that of the C5, which helps the speaker offer an extra five Hertz in the bass frequencies. But again, we retain those 0.75 inch tweeters. The power you get with this thing is just quite frankly ridiculous. You get a really deep and full sound stage that you can really fill a large room with. That step up in price does offer some notable improvements elsewhere too. So we see the upgrade to AirPlay 2 and the addition of Google Chromecast for added connectivity. It comes with a refreshed look with a removable mesh. Now it comes with a refreshed look with a removable mesh fabric grill. And I must say it looks much better without the mesh, but that's just me. You've got flush tweeters, a revised base port design, and more preset buttons. It also removes the retro leather handle and the ethernet port, the Wi-Fi input switch, and the 3.5 mil aux in, but you still have the RCA line in, so you can still use this with a turntable. So that's very briefly all you need to know at this stage, but do let us know if you want a more in-depth video on the differences between these speakers in the range. And finally, onto our T3 Plus speaker here. So this is essentially just the Bluetooth only counterpart to the C3. So it's got Bluetooth 4.0 for connection, but no Wi-Fi. Now this one I've got here is a special edition raw colorway, but it is also available in the usual black, gray, and white as well. Now it is exactly the same size as the C3, and it has the same size woofer and tweeters. The T3 Plus is actually a refreshed version of the original T3, which won What Hi-Fi product of the year, three years in a row. Now this newer version features a redesigned reflex port for optimized bass response and returned DSP settings to enhance the sound signature, bringing it pretty much on par with the C3 in terms of sound quality. Though we did find the C3 to be just slightly more expressive overall. Of course, battery life is a very important feature and the T3 Plus offers double the battery life of the C3. So 30 hours at 50% volume and 12 hours at max. So this will give you longer playback time before needing to recharge. As a portable speaker, this isn't your usual form factor. It's obviously not the type of speaker that you're gonna chuck in a bag or take on holiday, but it will be great for moving around your home from room to room and offering that portable flexibility. Sound quality wise, these speakers are verging on unbeatable for us when you consider their price and performance. The range in sizes offers something for all different types of listening. And honestly, we really enjoy the performance of all of them, but there are some differences which might help you make your mind up. I'll do a sound demo for you now to see what you guys think. And again, our usual disclaimer that a sound test, even with our dedicated binaural microphone, when watched over a YouTube video, it's not gonna replicate what we're hearing in here, but it should give you a good indicator. So pop your headphones on, sit back and enjoy.
Okay, welcome back. Now, honestly, guys, the sound quality is probably the best feature of the Audio Pros. You can get an incredibly clean and rich sound with all of the add-on speakers, but that essentially just gets ramped up in power as you go up the range. What I really appreciate is that Audio Pro aren't trying to do too much here. Everything is nicely balanced and all offer a really decent dynamic performance with impressive detail and power for each of their own form factors. Of course, as we went up in cabinet size, you should have noticed increases in the power and the bass, and each offers a more grander performance than its smaller counterpart. The C10 Mark II in particular offers a very impressive low-end performance, and although I was really impressed with the little C3 when we first tested it, having it side by side with the C5 and then the C10 does start to highlight the differences. You can really have some fun with this speaker, especially at higher volumes. It just doesn't distort. It is extremely expressive as well, which means if you have quite an eclectic music taste, it can sound great across many genres, and it makes Audio Pro very easy to recommend. With this range, it's very simple that you get what you pay for. All of these speakers have very impressive mids and highs. The overall musicality is really enjoyable, but the key difference is simply how loud and how deep they go. Of course, with the C5 and the C10, you do also have the option of adding a sub as well to take that another step further. As these are multi-room speakers, you can of course group them to have the same thing playing around your home, or you can connect two for a nice stereo pair. Now you will obviously need two of the same speaker to do that. So now we've looked at each speaker and heard how they all sound, which of them is right for you? Now if you've got a more restricted budget and you're torn between the T3 and the C3 and the C5, now we can simplify things down for you. Do you just want to control via Bluetooth and job done? If your answer is yes, then it's the T3 Plus for you. Do you want your extra money to go on portability or an upgrade in sound? So if you want a battery option, it's the C3. If you want the best sound for your money, it's the C5. And if you have a bigger budget and you want the best sound performance out of this range and want to upgrade to things like AirPlay 2 or Google Chromecast, then really it's a no-brainer. Go for the C10 Mark II and you really won't regret it. If you're torn between the C5 and the C10 Mark II, really it's down to the space that you have in your home and how much you value a powerful sound performance. For us, the C5 is perfect for medium rooms, a bedroom or a small lounge, for example. The C10 Mark II is gonna be awesome in a larger open space where it can really shine. On the whole, I think Audio Pro are ticking a lot of boxes and getting a lot of things very right. The performance per pound is seriously impressive. And you guys know we're a fan of the Sonos ecosystem and we also love those Marshall Wi-Fi speakers. But the performance per pound that you get with these add-on speakers, not to mention the finesse in design here, is why we had to highlight this option for you guys. I think the only real downsides here is the fact they only support Bluetooth 4.0, which is quite an old version of Bluetooth now, so you don't get that increased range and sound quality improvements made on the later generations, as well as only getting the first version of AirPlay on everything except for the C10. I'd also say the design is going to divide people, so you do have to be a fan of that traditional Scandinavian design, which luckily I am, but I appreciate that not everyone will be. And lastly, I would say the app could be a little bit more slick and polished, but it's certainly not the worst out there and it's something that will always get better over time. Overall guys, even just for the sound quality alone, I really think these could be a dark horse in the multi-room industry and worth looking at if your preferred connection methods are only Spotify Connect, AirPlay and Bluetooth, or you're looking for something a bit more unique in design. Now do let us know guys if you want any more in-depth comparisons or you have any questions about Audio Pro or the speakers that we've covered. I'll put a link below for more info. For now, I'll pop up a playlist that we think you'll find handy, a video that we think you'll enjoy, and here's us if you're new around here and you haven't had the chance to subscribe yet. That's all from me today guys, catch you next time.